Hello friends, welcome back to the academy. This video, we will see about the supraingoinal fasciailiaca compartment block or otherwise called as supraingoinal FICB. FICB is the short form for fascia iliaca compartment block. I have already made a video on infrainguinal or the classic approach. In that I have dealt in detail the anatomy, sauna anatomy, the technique of giving the block, specific advantages, disadvantages, all those things have been dealt in that video. So such things we will not be seeing in this video. This video we will see in specific about the technique of giving a supraingoinal block, the advantages, disadvantages and comparison of the supraingoinal effect with other blocks which can be given for almost similar purposes. So if you have not watched the video, please go watch that video and come back so that you will get a better understanding of the anatomy. I will give a link here so you can either you can click here to go to that video or I will give the link for the same video in the comments and in the description. So let's start with the anatomy. This is what we have seen in the previous video. We have a supraingoinal approach and an infrainguinal approach for fascia iliaca compartment block. In supraingoinal approach, the needle will enter the compartment and we inject the drug into the compartment at a level above the level of inguinal ligament. And in infrainguinal or classic approach, we inject the drug at a level below the level of inguinal ligament. That is the main difference between the supraingoinal and infrainguinal approach. So what are the nerves which are blocked with the fascia iliaca compartment block? For supraingoinal approach, we have four nerves which may be blocked. First is femoral nerve which is blocked in almost all the cases, nearly 100% of the cases femoral nerve will be blocked if you give a supraingoinal fascia iliaca compartment block. Next nerve which is affected is the lateral femoral cutaneous nerve which is again blocked in 80 to 100% of the cases. Because in 10% of cases you may have an anatomical anomaly where the lateral femoral cutaneous nerve is absent. In such case, the lateral part of the thigh which is usually supplied by this nerve is supplied by the femoral nerve or the iliohypogastric nerve. And compared to the infrainguinal approach, if you have learned the anatomy, you can know that it is easy to block the lateral femoral cutaneous nerve in the supraingoinal approach than in the infrainguinal approach. Third nerve is the ilioinguinal nerve. Facial iliaca compartment block is not the classically described block for blocking the ilioinguinal nerve but there is a possibility of getting an ilioinguinal nerve block with a facial iliaca compartment block. If you want to know more about the ilioinguinal and the iliohypogastric nerve block, please watch this video. I will again give the link in the description. You can watch that and learn how to give ultrasound guided or landmark based technique of ilioinguinal and iliohypogastric nerve blocks. Fourth nerve is obturator nerve. Whether it will be blocked with a fascia iliaca compartment block? Controversy actually. There are few studies which say it will be blocked with a supraingoinal approach and few studies say it is not affected. In infrainguinal approach, you have already seen that there is 30 to 35 percent chance of getting a obturator nerve block. Not always 100 percentage chance. So there is this one study in which they have found that if you give large volume that is 62.5 ml of drug it will block the obturator nerve in nearly 100% of the cases. So 62.5 ml means it is 1 ml per kg of drug. But the expert discussion on this says that it is because the large volume of the drug which deposited it will disrupt the fascia iliaca and the drug seeps out to block the obturator nerve which is usually not affected or which is usually not blocked if you are giving a fascia iliaca compartment block. And again compared to the infrainguinal approach According to the anatomy, with a normal dosing, you have a more probability of an obturator nerve block than the infrainguinal approach. If we see the dermatome which is involved with the fascia iliaca compartment block, especially with supraingoinal approach, this is the anterior part of the thigh. This much area will be blocked if you are giving a supraingoinal fascia iliaca compartment block. Same as an infrainguinal approach. This part which is the lateral part of the thigh which is supplied with the lateral femoral cutaneous nerve is more likely to be blocked if you are giving a supraingoinal approach than infrainguinal approach. And on the medial thigh we have this small portion which is supplied by the obturator nerve which is less likely to get blocked if you are giving a fascia iliaca compartment block either supraingoinal or infrainguinal. If you see the below knee this part except the medial strip which is supplied by the saphenous nerve which is branch of femoral nerve. Other than that, the rest of the supply is from the sciatic nerve which is never involved in a fascia iliaca compartment block. In the posterior part of the thigh, again same as in how we are getting in an infrainguinal approach, 
the lateral part of the thigh will be affected because of the lateral femoral cutaneous nerve more likely with a supraingual approach and the upper part of this posterior thigh which is supplied by the posterior cutaneous nerve of thigh is not affected because it is a branch of sacred plexus and we are not going there and the below knee part again it is supplied by the sciatic nerve which is not involved in the fasciolaceous compartment block if you see the osteotome supply it is same as in infraingual approach because the major difference with the supraingual and infraingual approach is the effect on the lateral femoral cutaneous nerve so lateral femoral cutaneous nerve doesn't have an osteotome supply so the osteotome coverage is almost same in the supraingual and the infraingual approach but what experts say is that if you are giving a supraingual fasciolaceous compartment block the branches of the femoral nerve and maybe some of the branches of the obturator nerve which supply the hip are more likely to be blocked if you are giving a supraingual approach and they are less likely to be blocked if you are giving an infraingual approach what are the advantages of doing a supraingual fasciolaceous compartment block we have mainly three advantages first thing is like the infraingual fasciolaceous compartment block you are not directly targeting the femoral nerve so chance of nerve injury is very less so as you are not going near the nerve the chance of an intravascular injection into the femoral artery or femoral vein is also less second advantage is that the chance of getting a lateral femoral cutaneous nerve is more if you are giving in the supraingual compartment because in infraingual compartment whatever drug you are injecting it should seep above the level of inguinal ligament to get a lateral femoral cutaneous nerve involved third advantage is that the branches of the femoral nerve which are supplying the hip are more likely to get involved if you are giving a supraingual approach and you can have better analysis with a supraingual approach so all these factors all together contribute that compared to the infraingual approach you should have a better analysis with a supraingual approach to fasciolaceous compartment block We are discussing about the ultrasound guided technique for giving a supraingual fasciolaceous compartment block. There is a landmark based technique also which is described but due to the proximity to vital organs like bowel and vasculature and muscles and all it is not recommended to do so. So we will be discussing only about the ultrasound guided approach to supraingual fasciolaceous compartment block. So for doing the block first thing ergonomics is very important. Patient should lie supine with the thigh rested in the normal position. we will stand on the side to be blocked and the ultrasound machine is kept on the opposite side we use a high frequency linear transducer probe and the depth of the ultrasound probe is kept at 4 cm or 5 cm according to the weight of the patient if the patient is very obese we can use a curvilinear probe as well so with we standing on the side to be blocked first we have to palpate the anterior superior iliac spine and we keep the probe over the anterior superior iliac spine in this parasagittal plane probe is in this parasagittal plane and the cephalic end of the probe is slightly rotated towards the umbilicus so if we keep like this over the anterior superior iliac spine in the ultrasound image what we are first seeing will be the first mountain which is the anterior superior iliac spine On the medial side of anterior superior iliac spine you can see a continuous white hyperechoic line which is the ilium. So once we identified our first mountain which is the anterior superior iliac spine now we have to slide the probe to scan on the medial side. So along the inguinal ligament you scan towards the medial side towards the pubic tubercle. The next mountain which we have to see is the anterior inferior iliac spine. So adjust the ultrasound probe in a way that the anterior superior iliac spine is seen in the center of the screen. Now this is the very important image which you have to see. This is where we'll give the supraingual fasciolaceous compartment block. So first we have to identify what all anatomical structures we are seeing in this specific image. Remember the probe is same in the parasagittal plane with a slight rotation of the cephalic end of the probe towards the umbilicus. So the structures which we are seeing here is the superficial most is the skin and the subcutaneous tissue deep to the skin and subcutaneous tissue on the cephalic side that is on the left side of the image you can see a small triangular shaped ending distal end of the muscle it is the internal oblique muscle which is seen exactly on the opposite side that is on the caudal side or on the right side of the screen you can see another similar image which is looking like a mirror image of the internal oblique which we saw it is the sartorius muscle so these two muscles are seen on the either side and you can see the anterior inferior iliac spine on the exact center of the image 
So always when you are scanning, make sure you are seeing the anterior inferior iliac spine in the center of the image and you can see the edges of two muscles that is internal oblique and sartorius on either sides. So this forms the classical appearance of bow tie appearance or otherwise called as horizontal hourglass appearance. So this is very important. So once you have seen these two muscles, deep to these two muscles you can see two vessels that is the deep circumflex iliac artery and deep circumflex iliac vein. It is very important to identify these vessels because I'll tell more about that when you're giving the block per se. Deep to this you can see a big arch like muscle which is covering the anterior inferior iliac spine. This huge muscle is our iliacus muscle. Superficial to the iliacus muscle and deep to the deep circumflex iliac vessels you can see a white hyperechoic line which is our fascia iliaca. If you are not clearly seeing this line, you can do the tilting of the probe as I have said so that you will get a better visualization of the fascia iliaca. Where is our target region? Our target region is in between the iliacus muscle and the fascia iliaca. So this forms the fascia iliaca compartment. The deeper most structure in the middle, we are seeing the anterior inferior iliac spine. On the cephalic side of the anterior inferior iliac spine, you can see the bowel and the peritoneum and on the Caudal side you can see the origin of the other muscles of the thigh which includes rectus femoris and all. So this sona anatomy is very important when giving a supraingoinal fascia iliaca compartment block. It is very important to see the decircumflex iliac vessels because first thing in the classic description of an ultrasound guided supraingoinal fascia iliaca block the author has said that the needle should reach in the fascia iliaca compartment at a point near the deep circumflex iliac vessels. So when you are injecting the drug, we should see the deep circumflex iliac vessel and the fascia iliaca above the drug depositing region and below you will see the iliacus muscle. Whenever you are not in the correct plane, you may see either the drug is getting injected into the intramuscular plane which is very difficult to identify or else your drug is going above the fascia iliaca. So if you keep the deep circumflex iliac vessel in the proper visualization way, if you are injecting above the fascia iliaca, you can see that the drug will come near the deep circumflex iliac vessel, which should not happen otherwise. So let's see the technique of giving the block. So we scan as we have said in the sonar anatomy, starting from the anterior superior iliac spine, come medially until you reach the bow tie or the hourglass appearance with the anterior inferior iliac spine or our mountain seen in the center part of the image. We can do an in-plane technique or an out-of-plane technique. I personally prefer in-plane technique for giving fascia iliaca compartment block or any field blocks because it is very easy to direct the needle into a specific compartment if you are doing in-plane block. You can do an out-of-plane technique also but in supraingoinal approach if you are not careful with the needling technique your needle tip may reach in the deep circumflex iliac vessel region or into the peritoneum or in the bowel and it may be difficult to direct the needle specifically into the fascia iliaca compartment. You may have an intramuscular injection also. So I personally prefer to do an in-plane technique for doing a fascia iliaca compartment block or any other field block per se. So probe is kept like this in the parasagittal plane with slight rotation towards the umbilicus. This is our needle entry point. I am using a 4 cm 24 gauge needle. You can use a 20 gauge 5 cm stimuplex needle or whatever your preference needle is. So we insert the needle in plane with slight medial direction almost directing towards the umbilicus. So if you see here, even though it is a supraingoinal approach to fascia iliaca compartment block, our needle is entering at the skin level at a point below the level of inguinal ligament. But finally or ultimately the drug will go behind the inguinal ligament and you will reach the fascia iliaca compartment at a point above the level of inguinal ligament. So that is the main point which you have to note. So like this you can see my needle is coming from the skin subcutaneous tissue passing through the muscles entering into the fascia iliaca. If you are using a big needle like 20 gauge stimuplex needle you will get a small pop feeling when you are entering or piercing the fascia iliaca. So once you have entered the fascia iliaca, you can note as I have said before, my needle has entered into the fascia iliaca portion at a point near the deep circumflex iliac vessels. Now I give a small aliquot of around 1 to 2 ml of drug to see whether, there is, whether I am in the proper plane. Once I have identified that I am in the proper plane, I will give the rest of the drug. 
So when I'm giving the rest of the drug, you can clearly see that the drug is separated from the deep circumflex iliac vessels by the fascia iliaca. So I'm not sure that I am inside the fascia iliaca. Second thing I have to make sure is that I am not too deep inside and I am not injecting into the intramuscular space. So accordingly I will direct my needle to avoid the intramuscular injection. There are many studies which say that even if you inject the drug into the intramuscular compartment little bit, the drug will seep out of the intramuscular space and it will come into the fascia iliaca compartment and you can have a uh, somewhat acting fascia iliaca compartment block. But there is always a theoretical possibility as I said you may end up with a local anesthetic induced myopathy or myotoxicity. So always try to make sure you are injecting the drug into the fascia iliaca compartment, deep to the fascia iliaca, deep to the deep circumflex iliac vessel and not intramuscular. So whenever I am injecting the drug you can see that I am focusing the drug to spread into the cephalic region. So in this video you can clearly see the drug is spreading into the cephalic region or onto the left side of the screen. So when it's spreading into the left side of the screen it is going into the pelvis and it will block the femoral nerve and lateral femoral cutaneous nerve block. This is what we need for a perfectly acting supraingual fascia iliaca compartment block. So once we have deposited all these drugs what I usually do is that and what is recommended is that you can do a infrainguinal classic scanning you can do. So this is a classic scanning for an infrainguinal you have already seen the video we start with the femoral artery then we can see the femoral nerve then when laterally when I am coming we can see the iliacus muscle. So this is a post injection scan I have given a supraingual block and now we are in the infrainguinal compartment you can clearly see a black line which is seen in the fascia iliaca compartment and few of the drug has even reached the femoral nerve. So that makes sure that I was in the proper compartment when I was giving in a supraingual approach and the drug has spread adequately to block the femoral nerve as well. So what drug you have to use for giving a supraingual approach? Several studies say that you can use a 20 to 40 ml volume of drug of either 0.2 to 0.375 percentage of ropivacaine or you can use same 20 to 40 ml of 0.125 to 0.375 percentage of bupivacaine. What NISORA says is that you can use around 20 to 40 ml of 0.2 percentage of ropivacaine. There is this scientific report which has come in this study they have found out that the minimal effective volume for block affecting 50% of the population has something around 15 ml and the minimum effective volume for the block affecting around 90% of the population around 27.5 ml and they have used 0.2% of ropivacaine. So you need something around 30 ml to get an effective block in the supraingual FICB. And as I have said earlier there is this one study in which they have deposited 62.5 ml of drug that is around 1 ml per kg of drug and they found that the operator nerve was blocked in almost all incidents. So what additives you can add? You can add additives to get a better duration of the effect. So commonly what I am adding is dexamethasone 4 mg to 8 mg or you can add dexmedetomidine. Few studies they have said they are adding 0.5 microgram per kilogram and in some studies they, they have added up to 2 microgram per kilogram. And you can add adrenaline also 1 in 2 lakh solution. If you see the block dynamics as I am depositing the drug in the fascia iliaca compartment it will take at least 30 to 45 minutes for the drug to act and if you have given adequate volume and if you have added additives you will get a duration of something around 12 to 18 hours. So as I have said earlier in the infrainguinal approach video for supraingual approach also we need something around 30 ml of drug. So if you want to give 30 to 40 ml of drug you need to have a dilute concentration of the local anesthetic to prevent systemic toxicity. So in that case whatever drug we are injecting will be a dilute concentration and whatever drug which is reaching the femoral nerve or the major nerves which you need to block will be very dilute and they will be able to produce only what is necessary for analgesia purpose. A procedure to do under sole regional anesthesia will be difficult if you are doing a fascia iliaca compartment block. If you see the comparison of the supraingual approach with the infrainguinal approach, it is always found to be better than the infrainguinal approach basically due to two reasons. First thing, your lateral femoral cutaneous nerve is more likely to be involved with supraingual approach and that will definitely cover the cutaneous innervation of the skin incision region for the hip procedures. Second advantage is that your femoral nerve articular branches to the hip are more likely to be involved if you are giving a supraingual approach. 
Compared to the infrangular approach, again they found that the major effect is within the 24 hours. After 24 hours, there is not much of a difference in supraanguinal and infrangular approach. And even if you are doing the procedure under general anesthesia, supraanguinal approach will give better analgesia than the infrangual approach. And there is this regionalization pain medicine article which has come and say that you have better chance of getting an obturator nerve block if you are giving a supraanguinal facial echo compartment block. There is this PubMed article and Springer article which says the effectiveness of facial echo compartment block for total knee replacement analgesia. Definitely you have better effectiveness but the problem is that you will have femoral nerve block and associated quadrants of weakness and you may not be able to ambulate the patient for about 12 to 18 hours. That is one disadvantage of giving a facial like a compartment block for total knee replacement. But if you are not planning to ambulate the patient then definitely you can go ahead with the block. Few other blocks which have been uh, discussed in terms of analgesia for hip procedure is one is PENG block. I have not made a video on that I will be putting that very soon. So in the PENG block also it has been found to have similar efficacy with supraanguinal facial echo compartment block. Advantages with the facial echo compartment block is that you will have additional lateral femoral cutaneous nerve involved which definitely cover the cutaneous innervation region. Second comparison was with the anterior QL block which was done again found to have similar efficacy but you should know that the QL block is not an easy block to give for a beginner or intermediate level of skill so again it is found to be useful. Third thing is what they have done is again comparison with lumbar plexus block same or similar efficacy is found with supraanguinal facial echo compartment block but again lumbar plexus block is also not an easy block to give for a beginner or intermediate level of skill. But it is not like supraanguinal block is the best block you can give there are few articles which say otherwise as well. There is this one article which has come which says that the femoral nerve block has found equal efficacy than the supraanguinal facial echo compartment block but they have not compared the complication rates associated with these two. Second thing there is this article which has come from the Brazilian journal which says that it is effective for the first 18 hours but after 18 hours definitely epidural is useful because we are not using a catheter. If you have an epidural catheter definitely you can prolong the postoperative analgesia. And definitely if you compare the facial echo compartment block with the intravenous opioid analgesics definitely the facial echo compartment block will be way ahead in terms of avoiding complications and providing better analgesia. So what are the disadvantages of giving a supraanguinal facial like a compartment block? First thing you need an intermediate level of ultrasound using skill to visualize the proper sonar anatomy and direct the needle into the facial like a compartment. If you are facing any difficulty in directing the needle or visualizing the needle in any blocks, I suggest you to watch this video so that you can easily visualize any size of needle in any blocks. Whether it be in plane or out of plane, you can easily visualize if you follow these steps. Second disadvantage is you have many sono anatomically important structures that is you have peritoneum, you have bowel, you have major vasculatures. So you should avoid the needle or drug going into these structures that is why we don't suggest to do a landmark based supraanguinal approach. Third thing you have high possibility of going the needle into the intramuscular compartment of the iliacus muscle and you may have a theoretical possibility of local anesthetic induced myotoxicity or myopathy. Fourth thing, definitely you are blocking the femoral nerve. As I have said, you will definitely have a quadriceps weakness and if you are planning for postoperative mobilization or ambulation of patient, this block will not be your first choice. So that completes the video. I hope all of you understood how to give a supraanguinal facial echo compartment block. If you have any suggestions or if you would like to know more about any other blocks, please let me know in the comments. So I have given other few links for another important blocks which is very useful for you. First thing you have a cervical plexus block which is very useful for multiple procedures. Second thing I have put again the infrainguinal approach for facial echo compartment block. If you have not watched this video please watch this again so that you will get better understanding of the anatomy. So until we see you next time, thank you.